Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video, our video number two in uh, our series in uh, regard to in-context assembly modeling, what I'm going to be doing is uh, showing you how to put in parts. We're going to start parts, uh, putting parts in here using the sketch geometry we've uh, already put together in our assembly and using that sketch geometry in order to derive the size of our parts and some of the other parameters associated with our parts. So with the last video, you might want to view that. View that. I put in uh, some uh, sketches, and I call them design sketches. These sketches are associated with the with the primary plane, so our front sketch to the front plane, right sketch to the right plane, and so on and so forth. Um, I call those design sketches. We're going to use that nomenclature throughout the rest of this design. There's also something in within an assembly called a layout sketch, which uh, goes into a little bit more detail, and it's uh, more it's considered more for an application for. Uh, uh, kind of a machine design in a way where you have a lot of moving parts, but I believe either of these methods would work just fine. They're very similar to each other. So let's do this. Let's create our new, our first part. And the way you do that, you can go up here to the pull down menu and go to insert uh, model, or go to insert components, go to this pull down arrow. And what we want is a new part. We don't want any existing parts. We want a new part. And I get these error messages in regard to my valid or my templates not being valid, but yet. It seems to be valid, so it uh, picks up that uh, part template, and uh, we're on our way. So from this point on, we're probably going to ignore those um, those warnings. I don't think you're going to get those. So anyways, when you have the, your cursor, you'll notice you have a green check mark there. And if you look down here in your status bar, it says uh, select the face or plane of which to position the new part. What it's saying is, oh, select the face or plane in order to position the front plane of our new part. So what we're doing is we're designing... Uh, what surface or plane we want to put the front plane on, and we want to make sure that in order for continuity between all of our parts in the assembly, we're going to always make our front plane with the front plane. So we're going to click the front plane here. What it does is it does two things right away. It, it goes into the edit components portion of our assembly, and it opens up a sketch on our front plane. So we're all set to go. So let's do this. While we're here, we're going to go to convert entities, I'm going to click on the edge of our uh, revolver barrel and uh, the hole, the guide for uh, where the bullet's going to go. I'm going to click on those two things and go to green check mark. And green check mark again. And now we have our sketch. We have our uh, sketch within the assembly. And now we can do additional elements to that. So let's go ahead and open up our part. We've done this a couple times. So it's called part six. And we'll continue to number those parts as we continue to put parts in here. So here's our part six. We right-clicked on it, we open it up into a, a separate window, and let's go ahead and just do what we uh, typically do at this point, and uh, start uh, modeling our features. So we're going to take our sketch, and click on that, go to Selected Contours, we're going to click on both of these. We're going to reverse the direction and go into the back, and let's make it go maybe a quarter of an inch. We're not going to go too far. Just to show you uh, what, it, what, it, um, what it takes to do this. We could do this all within uh, the part environment right now, or we can do all this within the assembly. In a few moments, we're going to go back to the assembly and show you how to make modifications to this. So, typically, we'll, we'll call this our base. And you notice some symbols involved in here, what looks like a dash and a uh, greater sign, greater than uh, sign. Kind of actually looks like an arrow. What that means is a certain, it's a um, an annotation that defines that uh, this sketch and the feature associated with that sketch has got an in-context relationship with something else and that link is active. Uh, it may not be active if you just opened up this part outside of the assembly, which means you have the ability to make modifications to that part outside of the assembly, but if you do do that, you're going to see a question mark in here. In order to reestablish that, you'll have to close that part and open up the, the assembly and open up the part within the assembly in order to reestablish that connection. Okay, so we have our base. Let's go ahead and borrow that sketch and do an extruded cut. And uh, again, go down to select the contours. Let's go ahead and select that hole. And this time we'll do a through all on it. Green check mark. And it's kind of a, a shortened version of our... Uh, revolver barrel. We can also make that a little bit uh, longer if we like. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and uh, save this. And when we do save this, we're not going to call this part 6. And you have a choice here when you're uh, saving elements within an in-context assembly. You can save that part within the assembly itself, and you can't open that part separately. But what I like to do 
since uh, all we're going to be doing is putting some basic uh, geometry on these parts within the assembly I like to be able to open up that part outside of the assembly environment and put extra stuff in there stuff that may not necessarily be associated with any of the, any of the design sketches we had uh, in, inside the assembly itself so I'm going to go ahead and save this I'm going to go to save as and it's uh, giving us uh, this uh, dialog box up here saying that this uh, part is being referenced by other open documents as a virtual component. That means it's being uh, referenced by uh, the assembly itself. And save as we replace these references with the new name and convert them to normal components. And that's probably okay. We're still going to maintain that uh, relationship here. But we're going to call that our revolver round. And that's already part in here because I was playing with this before, but I'm going to go ahead and save on top of that. And yes, we want to replace that. So let's go ahead and close that. And here's our revolver round, uh, the barrel, our revolver barrel, which uh, we could also call that. It's still got the in context relationship in here. And it's still open here. So let's do this. Let's go back to our base extrude. And instead of uh, doing a blind, let's go to up to vertex. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be choosing a vertex which is going to define the very extent of where that revolver's uh, barrel is going to go. And it's going to go up to uh, this line, but we can define that line by clicking on that vertex. And go to green check mark. Uh, the hole in there, which is going to define where the, which is going to represent where the bullet's going to go, still is a through all relationship, so we don't need to make any additional modifications to that. Now we're going to go ahead and rebuild that edit component we're going to exit out of that so we're right back into the uh, right back into the assembly and now our revolver round is now no longer called part six it's called revolver round and it still has the in context relationship in here that you can see by the symbols we just talked about so I think that's enough for this video I'm going to go ahead and close this off and uh, and we will pick this up in the next video